BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the site that teaches you how to play guitar and mandolin, but this is Banjo Week. I've got a treat for you today. I've got a guest banjo in the cabin today. I'll tell you a little bit more about it here in a moment, but we're going to learn a couple solos for this fun old fiddle tune called Shove the Pig's Foot a Little Further in the Fire. There's other titles out there for it, but that's the one I like. And we're going to have a lot of fun because we're going to do some single string stuff and then incorporate some melodic things and some little triplet tricks it's just a lot of fun to play. It's an addicting melody and some really cool solos. If you're watching here on the website as a GoPick member, you have everything you need right here on this page. Just scroll down beneath this video. You'll see the rest of the video segments and the tabs and the three speeds of jam tracks to practice with. But if you're watching somewhere else, that's okay. You can come over to the website here in a moment at banjobenclark.com. Join as a GoPick member, have access to all of my content, just like all the rest of the GoPick members. Let's jump right into this one. Let me take just a minute to tell you about this really cool banjo that I get to play today and record my lesson with. This belongs to a student and a frequent visitor of the forum, also a friend of mine, Miss Maggie Williams. She lives down in Florida, but she's made a little banjo journey through the Southeast. She stopped at Mr. Jim Mills' place in North Carolina, purchased this 1929 Style 3 conversion banjo. It's all original down here. It's, the neck was made by Bill Sullivan. It's just a beautiful banjo, and it is really, really powerful. I, I haven't maxed it out yet. It's just a blast to play. Then she brought it uh, here close to Nashville. Went by another one of my favorite banjo players' place, Mr. Charlie Cushman, to uh, install some spikes on it. And then she let me borrow it for a couple days to do a lesson. So thank you, Maggie. It's a treat to get to play this thing. Now as we talk about shove the pig's foot a little further in the fire. This is one of those fiddle tunes um, that has a typical fiddle tune structure where you have an A part with a certain melody and it lasts for eight measures and then you'll repeat it. Okay, so you'll hear some repetition happening and then you'll go to a B part where the melody changes a bit and it's eight measures long and you repeat it. So we have a total of 32 measures and the interesting thing about this one is the chord progression doesn't change between the A and the B part. It's just the the melody, and, and it's quite an addictive tune. Now, I think I've figured out why. It's because it has a lot of space in the melody. It's got those quarter notes on the end of each one of those phrases, and so it just invites you to continue on to the next phrase. It's a lot of fun to play on banjo. I first learned to play it, uh, to, to uh, play in the ensemble with my guitar and mandolin lesson, and I wanted to play just the straight up melody. <laughs> So we're going to do just a very basic single string 
version of that before we move on to the more advanced thing. So if you've never played single stream before, this is a great way to jump in. And if you have played single stream before, uh, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun with this. So let's go ahead and throw the tab up there. And you'll notice beneath each one of the notes, I have uh, the little finger markings beneath the notes in the circles. T stands for thumb, one stands for index. And I just wanna let you know that that is your prerogative. I'm gonna treat it almost like I would a flat pick, meaning my thumb is going to play most of the downbeats, not all. And my index is gonna follow behind it and play what the flat pick would play on an upstroke. So it's almost like I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up with thumb and index. But I don't always do that because whenever it really makes sense to just use your index or your thumb, I will do that. And there's no real rules here. It's just something that you have to kind of figure out. Now what we're gonna work on is we're gonna work on timing and we wanna work on getting it pretty smooth. I'm not the best single string player. I'm learning just like you, but we don't want it super choppy. Okay, we wanna work on getting the coordination between our left and right hands. When you land on that open D string there in the measure labeled measure four, that has a little dot after the note. You see that? That's because it's a dotted quarter note, so it's gonna get a beat and a half. So as I were to count that measure, one and two and three and four and. Then we move on. And on the third beat of measure five, we have another dotted quarter. And then when we land on that second fret on the last measure of this line, you notice how this stem doesn't come all the way up to the note. It's a half note, it gets two beats. So just very, very slowly, I'm gonna play through this line. We'll play through the whole solo very, very slowly later on, but try to keep up with me and try to keep that thumb and index pattern moving. You, you definitely don't want to play two thumbs in a row if you're playing eighth notes or two indexes in a row because that's gonna limit your speed later on when you begin to speed up. repeating going on. We've seen all this before in seven and eight. Okay, and that's one time through the A part. At this point, we would repeat that A part, go back and start over. And um, so we're playing the same A part, you know, back to back, the same notes. Uh, so as we look at the B part, we're, our melody is going to change a little bit. We're going to get a bit more syncopated. There in measure 11, one and two and three and four and. Now that third fret note is the same note as our open first string. So we could go no problems, except that the notes ring out that way. And I did not want them to ring out and have that much resonance for the particular arrangement that I was playing. So if I fret it, I can control the ring of those notes. Okay, so pretty straight ahead, as long as you can count those dotted quarters and get the timing right. Measure 15. that point you would repeat. You can ignore those last two notes in measure 18 and just repeat back to measure 11 to play the B part a second time through. Now here's what we're going to do. If you're a gold pick member on the site, we're going to play through this whole basic single string melody slow, solo uh, very slowly together. Then we're going to jump into the melodic one and get into those triplets and different kinds of tricks that we're going to throw into this arrangement. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I'd be honored to have you over at the site, benjaminclark.com.